Today's historic trade agreement between Australia and Hong Kong marks a new season of hope for the future of world trade. The two countries have been at each other's throats for years, but now the hatchet's been buried by a treaty which allows unrestricted trading between all parties at all levels. I'm joined now by Martin Crace, the British Minister with special responsibility for the Commonwealth, and Gavin Hawtrey, the Australian Foreign Secretary in Canberra. Gentlemen, this is pretty historic stuff. Well done. A future of unbridled harmony then, Australia? Yes, I think uh, Martin Crace and I can be uh, pretty satisfied. It's, uh, it's a good day. And if, as in the past, Australia exceed their agreement, what will you do about it? This is a very satisfactory treaty, which I'm sure will work well. Naturally, if the limits were exceeded, then this would be met with a firm line, but I can't see this being uh, necessary. Mr Hawtrey, he's knocking a firm line in your direction. What are you going to do about that? Well, in that case, we just reimposed sanctions as we did last year. Sanctions? Hang on a second. Successful. They've only just swallowed their sanctions and now they're burping them back up in your face. I think sanctions is, is rather premature talk. Certainly, if sanctions were imposed, we should, uh, we should have to retaliate with appropriate measures. But I, I can't see it. appropriate measures is a uh, euphemism, Mr Hawtrey. You know what it means. What are you going to do about that? Well, I'd just have to go back to Cabinet. And ask them about what? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's a matter for the military. Uh, the military? I, I, th I think military measures is totally inappropriate reaction, and, and I think this is way, way over the top. Sounds like you're being inappropriate, are you? Of course I'm not being inappropriate, but Martin Crace knows that full well. This is the sort of misunderstanding that I thought we'd laid to rest during our negotiating period. Misunderstanding it certainly is. It's certainly not a treaty, is it? You're both at each other's throats. You're backing yourselves up with arms. What are you going to do about it? Mr Hawtrey, let me give you a hint. Bang! What are you asking me to say? You know damn well what I'm asking you to say. You're putting yourself in a situation of armed conflict. What are you plunging yourself into? You'd like me to say it? I want you to say it, yes. You want the word? The word! I will not flinch. You will not flinch from? War. War! Gentlemen, I'll put you on hold. If fighting did break out, it will probably occur in Eastman's town in the Upper Cataracts on the Australia-Hong Kong border. Our reporter Donald Bethlehem is there now. Donald, what's the atmosphere like? Tension here is very high, Chris. The stretched twig of peace is at melting point. People here are literally bursting with war. This is very much a country that's going to blow up in its face. Well, gentlemen, it seems you have little option now but to declare war immediately. Well, this is quite impossible. I couldn't take such a decision without referring to my superior, Chris Patton. He he's in Hong Kong. Good, because he's on the line now via satellite. Mr Patton, what do you think of the idea of a war now? I'll take that as a yes. Very well, it's war. War it is. That's it, Chris. It's war. War has broken out. This is the war. That's it. Yes, it's war. From now on, the day to day will be providing the most immediate coverage of any war ever fought. On the front line and in your face, Donald Bethlehem. Standing by, Douglas Hurd. The day to day smart bombs have nose mounted cameras. This is Smart Bomb Stephen, and that is Susanna Gekeloys. I'll be reporting from inside the fight. Like some crazy Trojan. And keeping an eye on everything that's going on out there at the day to day news pipe, Douglas Trox. Chris. But first, the weather from Sylvester Stewart. And now the weather, starting in the Back south. to the war and on the front line in Eastman's town, our reporter Donald Bethlehem. Donald, what's the latest? As I swirled the last traces of toothpaste from my mouth this morning, a soldier's head flew past the window, shouting the word victory. Seems to be a lot of action behind you there. Have you seen any fighting yourself? Today, I saw an old woman on the ground. She was lying in a pool of her own tomatoes. Thank you, Donald. Earlier today, I've been down among the fighting myself. This is my report. There's something about the way these people move that tells you they are a nation at war. Look into their eyes and you can read the words, I have a reservation at the restaurant of death. It's a messy bistro with a bad name for soiling its customers' clothes. We've seen only one napkin in four days. The people here are confused spending most of their time running about like idiots. Oh, we 